everybody. This is Ruth. I'm one of the naturalists at Beaver Creek Reserve. And today's trailside treasure is actually right outside the back door of the Nature Center. From the Nature Center's deck, I was seeing these trees right in here. And I noticed that the bark is missing from those trees. Let's see if we can take a little closer look at it before we decide what's going on. There's actually quite a bit of the branch that has been uh, stripped. That is not squirrels. A couple weeks ago we looked at squirrels and they kind of leave things a little more raggedy. Woodpeckers might use this, but they won't do, they didn't do the initial damage. Squirrels may come and use these spots, but they didn't do the initial damage. When we see entire branches of trees cleaned out, if we look carefully, we might see little tooth marks. And those are pretty big tooth marks. That would not be from a squirrel. This is actually from a porcupine. Porcupines are eating the inner layer of the, uh, of the bark. Uh, they'll chew off pine branches. Uh, they'll go on to oaks, maples, whatever, and will eat the, eat the bark. It surprises a lot of people. They don't realize that porcupines can climb. A little bit later, we'll take a look at a porcupine in his claws uh, to see how those claw nice curved claws could help them to climb. I'd like to go down and see if we can find some tracks. So let's make our way down closer to the tree. So here I am at the bottom of the tree, and the trail is actually kind of hard to find. We don't have the best tracking snow right now, we had a little dusting of snow last night. But if we look really carefully, like right in here, we can see the sweep marks that were made by the quills. And there's definitely a depression in the snow. And he's hanging out under the back deck, the banding deck. Now there's a couple of holes up in here tight up in the corner and I'm assuming he might be spending his days in that area. I'd like to share a little bit more information with you about porcupines, but it's kind of cold out here. So I'm going to go finish up inside. Come on in and I'll meet you inside. Porcupines are pretty cool little animals. The big thing most people know are those quills. Let's take a little closer look at a stuffed porcupine that I have here at the reserve. A porcupine has about 30,000 quills. Not, not all of the hair on its body are quills. Some of it is just kind of a bristly fur, but the quills are hollow. And on the end, the hairs grow scales, which forms a barbed, which is why when it goes in, it sticks or, or continues to work its way in and very hard to get out. Now, the quills are modified hairs. So just like us, porcupines cannot throw the quills. They cannot throw their hair. But the hairs, the quills are fairly loosely attached. And pretty much any time like us, you know, you just, if you brush through your hair, the, the loose old hair comes off very easily. <sighs> Similar to the porcupine. So if, if you run into this porcupine out in the woods, he's going to try to get his backside pointed towards you. He's probably going to try to run away. They actually can move pretty quickly. Uh, he's going to climb a tree. But if he's cornered, he'll turn and put the quills up. The quills will then stand up. When they're not feeling threatened, the quills are laying down on the body. You have to be close enough for him to hit you or touch you with the quills. Now there are different types of porcupines throughout the world, and some of them have barbed quills and some of them don't. What they found out is that the barbed quill takes about 50% less pressure to go into the skin. The non-barbed quills needed a lot more force to get them to go into the skin. Now what's interesting is doctors are looking at this 
or scientists that work with doctors uh, in order to improve needles. Uh, because if they can get a hypodermic needle to go in with less pressure, you're going to have less discomfort when you have to get a shot. Good news for us, hopefully they succeed. Now porcupines don't have the sharp quills on their belly, nor do they have the sharp quills on their face. And so when a predator, like a fisher, now fishers are one of the few animals that actually eat porcupine, they figured out that if they kind of attack the face, they can flip porcupine over. And then once that soft belly is exposed, they don't have to deal with the quills. They can easily get to, to porcupine. Let's take a look at the porcupine's feet. I am gonna wear a pair of gloves because the quills are still there and they're very real. And so just for my own comfort, I'm gonna pop on a pair of gloves so I can pick this little guy up. If you take a look at those foot pads, you'll notice that they are fairly large. The nails, the, the toenails are fairly long. Remember, these guys are climbers, so they've got those long curved toenails for, to help them climb. So when the porcupines walk, they're slightly pigeon-toed, and because they're such chubby little critters, they have kind of this waddle mark. And then as they do that, you can imagine that tail is swinging behind them. With all the bristles and the quills, it leaves kind of a big broom-shaped mark going with it. Very, very interesting, very distinct track for the porcupine. Another sign of porcupine that you might find is their scat. Now this is replica scat that I have here in the Nature Center. But it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it looks sort of like red kidney beans. Now it can vary. Just like all animals, as your, di as your diet varies, your scat can vary somewhat. But the red kidney bean shape is pretty unique to porcupines. Depending on the food or how old it is, it might be brown or black in appearance. Uh, but again, if you find this red kidney beans, I've not actually ever found any a big enough pile out in the woods, uh, but if, if you find a large uh, deposit of porcupine scat, apparently it smells quite a bit like turpentine or paint remover. Porcupines are members of the rodent family. So squirrels, mice, beaver, all those animals are rodents. And one of the telltale things for a rodent, we can tell just by the skull. Most rodents have these orange front teeth. A few weeks back we looked at that tooth with the beaver. Remember that the orange enamel on the front is harder than the white enamel on the back. And since most rodents are eating hard materials, these teeth continue to wear away. But the soft side wears away faster than the, the hard side, the orange side. And so it makes a wedge, make, gives them a cutting surface. Thank you for joining me for today's Trailside Treasure. Hopefully you are out and exploring and finding all sorts of treasures of your own. Have fun. See you next time. Hi, I'm Eric Keisler, Executive Director from Beaver Creek Reserve. Thanks for watching this great educational video from our staff. To find out more information like this and others, check out our website at beavercreekreserve.org. You can also support us by being a member or donating to our endowment campaign, which is supporting Beaver Creek through this COVID-19 crisis. Thank you. We appreciate your time.